ahead of his WrestleMania 39 main event against Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes reveals a sneak peek at his WrestleMania 39 attire, revealing his weight belt, which does feature the names of several independent companies that he previously worked for, including Ring of Honor and All Elite Wrestling. Speaking of Cody Rhodes, he defeats Solo Sokoa last night on Monday Night Raw, handing Sokoa his first Ross pinfall-wise on the main roster. The brand-to-brand Invitational is indeed dead, and we've got an update on the brand split in WWE 2. Dominic Mysterio says he wishes Eddie Guerrero was his real father last night on Monday Night Raw. WWE CEO Nick Khan talks about the ongoing WWE sale process. The Demon Finn Balor is confirmed to be returning at WrestleMania inside Hell in a Cell against Edge. Brock Lesnar and Amos weigh in ahead of their WrestleMania 39 showdown coming to blows last night on Monday Night Raw. John Cena reacts to opening WrestleMania weekend in his US Championship match against Austin Theory. Chelsea Green will be going to WrestleMania and teaming up with Sonya Deville in the Women's Showcase match. Damage Control and Becky Lynch, Lita and Trish Stratus faced off last night on Monday Night Raw. Whatever happened to Vincent and Dutch, the former Ring of Honor stars, going to WWE? We've got details on that, plus the ratings for last Friday's edition of SmackDown. Alexa Bliss, her status for WrestleMania 39 has been revealed. A rumor killer on Nikki Cross possibly going on a long hiatus from WWE. And could DIY reunite after WrestleMania? Hey guys, welcome back to Wrestling News 365. Hope everyone is doing very well as we get closer and closer to WrestleMania 39. On the road to WrestleMania, of course, the main event is Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare versus Roman Reigns, the Tribal Chief for the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship. And while Cody Rhodes is hoping to leave SoFi Stadium with a new belt around his waist, or belts, he's already putting thoughts into the belt he'll be wearing into his main event match against Undisputed Universal Champion Roman Reigns on Sunday, April 2nd. The American Nightmare recently shared a photo of his weight belt for the big fight. You can see it on the screen right now. And according to Sean Ross Sapper, Fight for Select, the belt even contains references to WWE's competition. Fight for Select has confirmed that All Elite Wrestling, Ring of Honor, and even the 2018 pay-per-view All In are among the promotion initials that are engraved on the underside of Rhodes' specially made weight belt. Quote, in many respects, I'm alone out there, but I'm also not, Rhodes wrote on Twitter. Carry it with you. Rhodes famously toured the independent wrestling circuit after he left WWE in 2016 before founding All Elite Wrestling with Tony Khan, Kenny Omega, Matt and Nick Jackson. The road to the former AEW, uh, the road that the former AEW TNT champion took through various promotions as well as Ring of Honor and New Japan Pro Wrestling likely played into Rhodes' slogan of finish the story as he looks to win the title that remained elusive to his father, the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. Of course, Rhodes left AEW in 2022, re-debuting in WWE at WrestleMania 38, but was sidelined shortly after his return by a pectoral injury, which Rhodes wrestled through at last year's Hell in a Cell event. Rhodes returned at the 2023 Royal Rumble, winning the match to earn his WrestleMania title showdown against the Tribal Chief. Speaking of Rhodes, too, I did say that earlier on, Solo Sokoa has for the first time been pinned on the main roster, and it was at the hands of the American Nightmare. Cody Rhodes picked up a big win to gain some momentum in his last match before WrestleMania. WrestleMania's 39 main event on Sunday. On Monday night's episode of Raw, he closed the show facing Bloodline member Solo Sokoa for just the second time. Unlike their Madison Square Garden house show match two weeks ago where there, there was a conclusive finish, with Rhodes picking up a clean pinfall win instead of the disqualification victory he scored at the world's most famous arena. The Raw main event reached its crescendo when the Usos made a move towards entering the ring after Rhodes kicked out of a Sokoa pinfall attempt after Uranagi. That was the catalyst for their WrestleMania opponents and tag team title challengers Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens to run out, starting a brawl that quickly moved to the back. After they regrouped in the ring, Sokoa blocked a Cody Cutter attempt and went for a Samoan spike, but Rhodes dodged it and hit the crossroads for the victory, handing Solo his per first pinfall loss since he was called up to WWE's main roster at Clash at the Castle in September. As I mentioned, Rhodes is set to take on Roman Reigns for the latter's undisputed Universal Championship this Sunday night in the main event of the second night of WrestleMania 39. A great match and certainly a big one as Rhodes heads to the showcase of the Immortals. Now, what's going on with the brand split in WWE? We know a draft is coming, allegedly, according to some reports. What about the brand-to-brand -brand invitation? Remember that? Well, in a report from Sean Ross Sapper, Fight for Select, in a huge shocker, 
It's a joke. The brand to brand, brand, uh, brand to brand, especially when it was going on, but brand to brand invitational is effectively dead, WWE sources have told Fightful. The move was one of many ideas, if you remember them raw dark, the wild card rule, no commercials during matches, matches that were two out of three falls most of the time that WWE implemented in order to boost ratings, and it was quickly forgotten and rarely referred to. Intermittently, when a wrestler would appear on an uh, opposing brand, the brand to brand invitational would be referred to. Originally, if you cast your mind back, the rule was to allow a talent from each brand to appear on the rival show once quarterly. One source indicated to Fightful that the idea was met with plenty of dissent backstage in Creative. One member of Creative told Fightful they haven't personally heard the term brought up backstage at all in 2022 and don't expect to hear any more about it again unless this happens. The story itself actually happens to jog someone's memory. Another source that has worked near Creative said that the rule hadn't been brought up at all in the Triple H regime and even Fox and USA Network have relaxed their insistence on distinctly different brands Brands as of late, but there had been rumors. There had been rumors that we were going to get a hard and fast brand split post WrestleMania, particularly once the titles are split up. So keep an eye on that. But to clarify what the report is saying, that the brand splits and the stars crossing brands aren't dead, just the weird wild card rule, brand to brand invitation, whatever it was called, that's not going to happen. But there is expected to be a draft after WrestleMania, but again, we don't have a ton of details on that. At WrestleMania this coming weekend, of course, it's going to be father versus son for just the second time in WrestleMania history. And Dominic Mysterio has admitted in several interviews that he's been emulating his late storyline father, Eddie Guerrero, to generate the heat for his heel character. In fact, Dominic has gone to the extent of getting the go-ahead from Vicky Guerrero to continue invoking the name of Eddie for purposes of furthering his on-screen rivalry with his real father, Rey Mysterio. On last night's edition of Raw, an irate Dominic continued to berate his family for their failure to protect him but it was the concluding portion of his promo that triggered an unpleasant gasp from the fans in Phoenix Arizona what kind of father hits his own son what kind of mother sits there and does nothing the silence was deafening Dominic said referring to the now viral moments and segment from last week's Smackdown where Ray finally accepted his son's Wrestlemania 39 challenge I should have told my mother to shut up a long time ago Dominic then referenced the custody of Dominic ladder match, the infamous one between Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero in 2005 at SummerSlam, of course, which Rey won. Dad, I've never said this out loud, but I wish Eddie was my real father and you never existed, Dominic said while staring into the camera, because my entire family is a disgrace to the Mysterio name and the Mysterio name will be mine at WrestleMania. Dominic's emotionally charged promo was followed by a singles bout between Ray and Damian Priest, which ended in a disqualification finish. After the match, Dominic and Priest attacked Ray until Legado del Fantasma made the save. As Dominic continues to pay homage to Eddie through his mannerisms, his fashion sets, and even his mullet, fans on social media have suggested the possibility of Dominic arriving for his match in Eddie's trademark lowrider at WrestleMania 39. Dominic has also been performing Eddie's signature shimmy and frog splash to further emulate the late wrestler. Ray versus Dominic this weekend will mark the first insistence of a father versus son match at WrestleMania since WrestleMania 17, where Vince McMahon battled his own son Shane McMahon in a street fight at the show. I'd even go as far to say maybe Dominic might end up becoming Dominic Guerrero on WWE television in the future. We'll have to wait and see, but it was an excellent promo nevertheless. Nick Khan, WWE CEO, has spoken about the business side of WWE. Just months into 2023, WWE finds itself in a pretty good spot financially. Changes both inside and outside of the ring have drawn plenty of interest, while rumours of a sale remain very much alive. In an interview with Sports Business Journal just days away from WrestleMania 39, WWE CEO Nick Khan attributed many things to the company's recent success, while also tackling what he believes to be the most tricky aspect of a potential sale. If you look at ratings and relevancy of our product, we like to think we're in a pretty good position, Khan stated. And quite frankly, a look at the numbers makes it difficult to disagree. 
3. According to the Sports Business Journal report, year-over-year viewership is up 9% for Raw on USA Network, 8% for SmackDown on Fox, and even 5% for NXT on USA. While citing internal numbers, WWE noted that when it comes to their premium live events on Peacock, the company is experiencing more than 50% in viewership gains on average. It also notched live gate records in nine markets for SmackDown and seven for Raw as of March 6th. Overall, Khan chalks up WWE's recent success to a myriad of factors. Certainly Triple H, Khan said, but that would also include the entire writing team, the producers, the superstar slash in-ring performers, and the system that Vince set up. Khan believes that the system moves forward regardless of who is in charge, and the system certainly has seen changes in recent months, most notably with Paul Triple H Levesque taking over WWE's creative as chief content officer. Outside of the ring, the chatter of a sale, though, persists. Comcast and Endeavor may not be interested in buying, but they've still seen be named alongside the likes of Disney, Netflix, and Amazon as potential buyers. There might just be one hiccup in potential talks, though, balancing live entertainment with overall programming. That's probably the trickiest of all the parts, Khan said. But one thing that all potential buyers know is that the rights that Fox and NBC, NBCU negotiated for separately will obviously have to be adhered to and respected with all sorts of good faith attached to that. So, not really too much more news when it comes to the sale of WWE. Maybe that will ramp up after WrestleMania as we're really focused in on the biggest event of the year right now. But keep an eye on it. And of course, if we get any details, we'll let you know. As was one of the worst kept secrets in WWE recently, the demon Finn Balor is coming back. Last week, Edge implored Finn Balor to bring the demon to meet him inside Hell in a Cell at WrestleMania 39. On Monday's WWE Raw, Balor seemingly obliged. In response to Edge's invitation, Balor said he always knew their year-long rivalry was going to end with him and Edge dragging each other through the lonely and wicked structure, i.e. Hell in a Cell. However, Balor stressed that unlike Edge, he doesn't need added motivation to tap into his most violent side. Don't you know there's nothing more dangerous than a caged demon? Bala asked Edge. So Edge, go to your dark place, light your candles, do whatever it is you need to unlock it to summon it. But just remember, I don't summon my demons. My demons are always here. You just have to look closely. At this point, Bala's face was interspersed with images of his demon alter ego. Subsequently, WWE's promotional material for the match was changed to include a picture of the demon, which you can see right there, placing the earlier graphic of Balor in his Judgment Day attire. As such, it is now confirmed that Balor will be bringing back the Demon for the first time since his loss to Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules in September 2021. The final sequence of that title bout drew the ire of fans as the top rope snapped just as Balor prepared to hit the Tribal Chief with the coup de grace. In subsequent interviews, Balor confirmed he had no intention of utilizing his alter ego persona unless the moment warranted it and see, certainly WrestleMania inside Hell in a Cell, I think that certainly does. So indeed, it will be the Demon Finn Balor versus Edge inside Hell in a Cell this weekend. Now, one of the biggest segments coming into this week's edition of Monday Night Raw was the weigh-in between Brock Lesnar and Amos. Ahead of his literally enormous WrestleMania 39 match, Amos and Brock Lesnar had weighed in on last night's edition of Raw. However, ahead of the segment, Amos actually entered to a new theme song. After MVP detailed all of the reasons why he was primed to take home the victory at WrestleMania 39, Amos weighed in at a staggering 410 pounds. Next, Brock Lesnar entered. However, there was no official weight noted for the beast because before he even hopped on the scale he instead hopped on Amos kicking off straight away Brock went into work and attempting to get the physical upper hand with Amos however Amos didn't back down that easily throwing up a monstrous sized boot Amos held his own against Lesnar before the melee broke apart in fact he scared Lesnar off holding up the scales to potentially use as a weapon even though Brock had attempted to use it as a weapon earlier on once again Brock trying to sell that he's maybe a bit intimidated by the Nigerian giant as we get close to WrestleMania this weekend. Of course, we know what the opening act and the opening match of WrestleMania 39 is going to be. It's going to be John Cena. 16-time world champion John Cena is set for his first WrestleMania match in three years at WrestleMania Saturday on April 1st when he takes on Austin Theory for the United States Championship. Cena hasn't appeared on WWE TV since 
burning Austin Theory on the mic in their promo segment on the March 6th episode of Monday Night Raw from Boston. However, he has now taken to Twitter to comment on the match's position on the WrestleMania card. As announced on SmackDown this past Friday, Cena and Theory's clash will serve as the opener to the Mania proceedings on the Night 1 events. Importantly for Cena, while he's had plenty of experience closing WrestleMania, he's also had experience of opening the show of shows too, something that he pointed out in his tweet saying, quote, first match WrestleMania 20 at Madison Square Garden, first match WrestleMania 39, SoFi Stadium, then now forever, Cena of course notably won the United States Championship in the opening bout of WrestleMania 20 at MSG, defeating the big show for the gold. He's hoping to repeat history and take back the gold 19 years later at WrestleMania 39, and again, he even photoshopped a picture of him holding the new United States Championship as well. Could that happen this Saturday? We'll have to wait and see. Chelsea Green is going to WrestleMania. The Karen got what she wanted. Chelsea Green is indeed going to the show of shows, and she's not heading there alone. During Monday night's edition of Raw, the fourth and final team for the Fatal 4-Way Women's Tag Team Showcase match was finalized in the form of her and her partner, Sonya Deville. All they had to do was go through the team of Candice LeRae and Mission Mia Yim. Before that match even took place, though, Green had to vent her frustrations to WWE official Adam Pearce yet again, interrupting Baron Corbin backstage she pleaded to Pierce that she needed a new tag team partner, noting that Piper Niven wanted nothing to do with her. Before Pierce even had a moment to respond, he was interrupted by Sonya Deville, who of course is a former official and has had many and numerous plenty of run-ins and problems with Pierce in the past. Eventually, Pierce made it official, pairing Green with Deville moments before they picked up a momentous victory. So, with Green and Deville going to WrestleMania, they're set to join the teams of Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez, Shotzi and Natalia, and Ron Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. Morgan and Rodriguez, as well as Shotzi and Natalia, won their way into the match, while Buddies, Rousey and Baszler were announced as the third team on Friday's edition of SmackDown. So we now know the full lineup for that women's tag team showcase match. Now, speaking of female tag teams, the female tag team champions, that being Becky Lynch and Lita, along with Trish Stratus, faced off against their WrestleMania opponents, uh, opening last night's edition of Raw on an episode of Miz TV. With The Miz asking a series of shady questions of Becky Lynch, Lita and Trish in the ring first, the segment was then interrupted by damage control. After Becky and Bailey squared off on the mic, Becky moved the attention to Dakota Kai and Io Sky, noting that they are exceptional champions in their own right, except now they're just goons for Bailey. After the verbal joust, there was a match between Becky Lynch and Io Sky in front of a packed Phoenix, Arizona crowd. In a hard-hitting match, the two teams both showed off impressive offense with their respective teams supporting them at ringside. In the end, the man Becky Lynch picked up the victory via a pinfall as the trio of the Women's Tag Team Champions and Trish Stratus t- stood tall. It was quite interesting at the end that Trish Stratus kind of separated herself a little bit from Lita and Becky and it has been rumours of course that Trish could be about to undergo a heel turn and maybe enter into a program with Becky Lynch too so keep an eye on that one. Now if you remember cast your mind back to when Bray Wyatt first came back to WWE and there was all this talk of the Wyatt Six, are they going to be involved with Bray Wyatt and all that kind of stuff and then it was revealed that former Ring of Honor stars Vincent and Dutch of the Righteous were, uh, they had a tryout, they had a tryout in WWE, they were even spotted on an episode of NXT in December 2022, leading to speculation they had both signed for WWE. It was later confirmed that the pair had been part of a WWE tryout at the Performance Center and there was a further rumour they were part of the Wyatt Six group. Dave Meltzer has now addressed the status of the pair while speaking on Wrestling Observer Radio. According to Dave Meltzer, the pair, they didn't end up signing with WWE. So as of right now, they continue to work independent dates, which is what they've been doing. So no Vincent and no Dutch to WWE seemingly. And I guess certainly there was no Bray Wyatt uh, presence on Raw last night. So we don't really know what's going on when it comes to Bray Wyatt at all at the moment. Now let's talk about SmackDown and the ratings on Friday as we get closer to WrestleMania. With NCAA March Madness in full swing and last Friday showcasing half of the tournament's Sweet 16, SmackDown looked to be up against uh, up against it heading into the evening, certainly. And as it turns out, viewership did take a slight dip compared to March 17's numbers, but only slipped by 2% according to WrestleNomics, with a solid average of 2.219 million viewers overall compared to last week's total of 2.258 million, while viewership dropped 
dropping roughly a week before WrestleMania is not ideal. These numbers don't appear to show anything really drastic. And again, the competition was very, very, very strong. Additionally, viewership among adults that make up the key demo of those aged 18 to 49 was down 2% per show buzz daily, reflecting a rating of 0.58 compared to last week's 0.59, a difference of just 13,000 viewers from 770,000 viewers on March 17 to 757,000 viewers this past Friday. That said, Friday's edition of SmackDown brought in its lowest uh, viewership total since December 16, as well as its lowest 18 to 49 rating since uh, February 17. Overall, SmackDown ranked seventh on television on the day as a whole in the 18 to 49 demo. But again, strong competition. It's not ideal seeing dips as you get closer to WrestleMania, but I think still overall, they'll still be very happy because as Nick Khan said earlier on, they're still doing very, very well financially and in terms of just everything in general at the moment, WWE, they're on fire. Now, there's been so much conversation about Alexa Bliss and what she's doing at WrestleMania. We've seen her kind of all over the place recently. And after disputing claims that she's on a planned hiatus, Bliss had now revealed that during her absence, she had appeared as a contestant on The Masked Singer. She had skin can uh, cancer treatment as well. The former multi-time women's champion went on to publicly address her status for WrestleMania 39, stating that she plans on being at SoFi Stadium this coming weekend. PW Insider has provided an update noting that Alexa Bliss is slated to be at WrestleMania weekend in Los Angeles. Bliss hasn't appeared on WWE programming since the Royal Rumble 2023 event where she lost to Bianca Belair in a Raw Women's Championship match. At the time, she was embroiled in a storyline with Bray Wyatt and Uncle Howdy, whose own status is, I guess for both, for WrestleMania 39 is currently up in the air following Wyatt being off television with an illness, physical issue, whatever it may be. So don't rule them out to appear, but a match at this point looks highly, highly, highly unlikely. Now, there had been a rumor about Nikki Cross possibly taking a long time away from the company, um, that she could be leaving WWE for a long time after WrestleMania to pursue a PhD. Nikki Cross, who is probably a fairly reliable source when it comes to Nikki Cross news, responded to that claim writing, quote, Hello, I hope you're well. This is not true. Uh, this is the first time I've ever heard about this. Pretty sure I'm a reliable source. If I choose to pursue a PhD after completing my master's in May, I wouldn't take time off wrestling. I would do both, just to clarify. Cross hasn't been a focus on WWE TV in the lead up to WrestleMania 39 and does find herself without a match this coming weekend since she's not in the four-way match at WrestleMania itself and there's no women's battle royal to equalize the men's Andre the Giant battle royal on SmackDown as well. So she's not really doing all that match at the moment, but certainly she's not leaving WWE and that kind of puts to bed that rumor. Finally, could we see a former popular NXT tag team reunite after WrestleMania? Well, certainly anything is possible. Um, we could see anything happen. In recent months, we've seen Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens uh, reunite after being bitter enemies and storyline on NXT. Uh, Zayn and Owens' NXT feud maybe is rivaled by Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa's split and subsequent rivalry with two storylines, with the two storylines often compared. Per WRKD Wrestling on Twitter, there have been discussions within WWE about a potential DR DIY reunion, although at the moment WA, WRKD Wrestling's sort of reliability is kind of going like this. They said that Bray Wyatt would be featured on Raw last night. He was not. But they have said Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn aren't the only frenemies reuniting. There's talks of Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa linking up on the main roster after WrestleMania, with Gargano going as far to say this in an interview this past week. Both Gargano and Ciampa are currently on the Raw roster, with Ciampa being caught up in April 2022 and Gargano returning to the company that August following Triple H taking over creative. Uh, Gargano pr recently provided a, an injury update on Champa, who's been out of action for a while. So we could expect to maybe see them reunite once Champa gets back, but we still don't really have a timeline on how quickly that's going to happen. But there you go, guys. This is the latest WWE news for you. Be sure to smash a like on the like button. Be sure to subscribe bottom right hand corner. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I'll speak for you again very, very soon. Hey guys, thank you for watching, listening, streaming, or however you come across this video today. Be sure to click on the video on the right there to watch our next video, or click the bottom there to subscribe, or the bottom right-hand corner. Thank you very much, and I'll speak to you again very soon.